Hello everybody. Welcome to Sophie's Tales channel. Make yourself as comfortable as you can and leave your worries and stress behind. This time is to relax. Take breaths and feel the tension leave your body. Close your eyes and dream the story I am about to tell you. Comic and romantic story from the world of ballet. Coppelia In a mountain village on a distant mountain peak, there once lived an inventor called Coppelius, together with Coppelia, his daughter. Every day, Coppelia sat on the balcony of her house reading a book, but she never moved or spoke. Even Swanilda, the most popular girl in the entire village, couldn't take a word of her. One morning, Swanilda happily went out into the square, turning her trail on France. Much to her surprise, she saw him flashing white grease on Coppelia and sending her a bivouac of sentries. Guys who flirt are the worst time mates. His Swanilda and Franz, who had not seen her before, was terrified. Before he could apologize, their friends came and called them. The villagers, they said, had also bought charms and bells. Tomorrow it will ring for all brides to be, said the president of the village to Swanilda. Will you be among them? Unable to hide her tears, Swanilda sadly shook her head and ran away, leaving Franz to feign ignorance. That same evening, when Dr. Coppelius left his mysterious messengers and decided to go for a walk in the village, a bunch of little kids ambushed him and threw themselves in front of him to scare him. The old inventor began to beat them with his cane to drive them away. Hearing the commotion, Swanilda and her friends went out into the square, but no one was there anymore. Suddenly, Swanilda noticed something shining in the dust of the street. It was the key to Dr. Coppelius' house, which had fallen to him in the turmoil. Lucky us, he cried, now we can go meet Coppelia in person. When the girls left, Franz appeared in the moonlight holding a ladder. He had planned to visit Coppelia too. Without breaking away from their fear, the girls broke into Dr. Coppelia's laboratory. There, they saw folded hands, googly eyes, and strewn bodies all motionless as if made of stone. Drawing a curtain in the dust, Swanilda found Coppelia sitting in, in her familiar chair reading her familiar book. Good evening, she said politely to her, but of course she got no response. She came even closer. Have you drunk the silent water? She asked her and took no answer. Then she reached out and tugged at her skirt. Coppelia again did not react. Bending still further, Swanita fixed her opposite with her eyes and suddenly burst out laughing. She's never going to talk 
she said to her trembling friends, because she's a doll. Everyone here is a doll. Jumping with excitement, the girls began to tune the toys and dance among themselves, turning the workshop up and down. They made such a noise that when Dr. Coppelius appeared among them, they did not even understand him. Out! Everybody out! he screamed, hitting their legs with his cane as they ran away. Swanilda, seeing that she was not about to escape, hid behind the curtain next to Coppelia. Alone at last, Dr. Coppelius was still collecting the scattered pieces. When suddenly Franz entered the laboratory from the balcony, they stopped the rummaging. The old inventor could not believe his eyes. Why am I tyrannized like this? he wondered, but this time prepared to face the invaders. What do you want? he growled, grabbing Franz by the arm. I want to I want to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage, Franz stammered. Dr. Coppelius smiled. His smile was warm, but his sighs cold. An idea had just flashed into his mind. Sit down and have a drink, he murmured, and then we'll talk like good friends. He pushed Franz into a chair and began to fill his glass non-stop. He had mixed the wine with some magical potion. As soon as Franz fell asleep, Dr. Coppelius backed up and got to work. Pulling the chair with a girl in the middle of the workshop, Dr. Coppelius watched her proudly. She was the most beautiful doll he had ever made, and now he was going to give her the gift of life as well. After consulting the diagrams in his magic book, he began muttering some ancient incantations. He then drew energy from Franz's eyes, muscles and bones and spurred it into Coppelia. At first, her eyes blinked. Then she shrugged. And then she stood up and took a few stiff steps. Dr. Coppelius was almost left with astonishment. He watched his doll move and dwell on its own, and his hopes grew higher and higher. After gathering himself with all his strength, he brought his hands to Franz's beast, absorbed the warmth of his heart, and led it to Coppelia's side. A small smile played on her lips, and she began to breathe. Dr. Coppelius trembled with joy as he bent over her chest and listened to her heartbeat. But of course my heart is beating, thought Swanilda, since I am a real person. You might be a fool not to understand that. Dr. Coppelius was not fool, but his love for his creation had blinded him. He had not realized that Swanilda who simply represented Capella. So, the faster she danced in front of him, the even happier he felt. Swanilda, meanwhile, was beginning to tire of the dance when she noticed Franz, who was snowing on the table. As long as she chooses to wake him, at the same time she also tunes all the other dolls 
so that the disturbance does not attract the attention of Dr. Kobeus. Sit carefully, please, protested the doctor, running west of her to prevent damage, but Swanilda wouldn't hear him. Pulling Franz to his feet, she asked him out of the door and ran away. Desolate, Dr. Coppelius collapsed. Next to him lay the lifeless, destroyed body of his beloved Coppelia, which in fact had never come to life. Early the next morning, all the villagers gathered in the courtyard of the mansion. The wealthy owner had promised them a new bed, and they were all invited to celebrate its arrival. Flower braids and ribbons, bright and colorful, were moving with the wind. All the new couples had received the blessings of the headman of the village along with a small dowry. Holding hands, Swanilda and Franz were first in the procession of happy brides to be. But while the village president was thanking the rich benefactor for the bell, the shadow suddenly appeared in the garden of the mansion. Dr. Coppelius had wrapped Coppelia in a blanket and carried her from his laboratory there. He was furious. I demand an explanation, he growled, pointing at the damaged door. I demand an apology. Someone has to pay for the damage done. I demand justice. Swanin and Franz begged him to forgive them for the joke they played on him. Please take my dowry, said Swanilda. It's not big, but it might be enough to fix the damage we have done. We never wanted to hurt you with our jokes. She was so sweet when she smiled, and her voice had such sincere greetings that Dr. Covelius forgave her at once. And when the president gave him also a bag of gold ornaments, His anger was completely dissipated. Muttering in his husky voice wishes from Swanild and the other beautiful brides, he happily returned to his workshop in his faithful dolls. Franz held Swanild in his arms. I don't have feelings for dolls anymore, he told her. The real girls are much livelier and have more fun. They offer you my heart with the joy of Swanita. Fine, she replied with a sly giggle, and I gladly accept it.